I would like us to stop demonizing insects. It feels like a lot of times we choose, well, this insect goes after something I like, so it's a pest and I have to eliminate. But this one's okay because it's not bothering something that I like. But we have to step back and take a look at the bigger picture. Where do these creatures fit in on the food chain? Where are their beneficial insects that will come in and actually help control the populations of these things for us? You know, we've decided, well, this is a pest and every time I see it, Every time I see anything like it, I have to get rid of it. So all ants are bad, all caterpillars are bad. Uh, maybe with a few exceptions that we've decided, well, this one's okay, but all the other ones are bad. Caterpillars are an interesting category. Caterpillars being a larval form of an adult insect, and we see them when they get bigger and, and they're starting to consume more. And so that becomes alarming and we want to get rid of them. We want, we want them out of the garden. There are plenty of natural predators. There's, there are parasitic wasps. There are shield bugs that will eat just about anything, including caterpillars. I've even seen a chipmunk eat a tomato hornworm caterpillar. If you've never seen that, you're probably better off. But there we have it. They have enough predators without us coming in and and killing them all the time. Nature has its own checks and balances. So as the population of something gets too big, predators will come in and help to balance out that population. Aphids are an excellent example of this in the garden. And I think I've done some short videos around this as well, but aphids in the garden can be really distressing. Uh, we had aphids on our beech plum tree and were absolutely covered, covered in aphids. And I wanted to do what I could to get rid of them, like maybe hose them off or clean them off, but really it's a losing battle. But with a little bit of patience, sure enough, the ladybugs arrived and ladybugs eat aphids and their larvae eat aphids as well. So ladybugs arrive, they've got a food source, they lay eggs and I've never seen so many ladybug larvae in one place and they just went to town and cleaned the entire plant. There was not an aphid in sight and then now we have an increase in population of ladybugs. So it's, it's less I have to worry about, it's less I have to maintain, just let nature kind of take care of it and be accepting of some loss, some damage. Honestly, the plant didn't care. The beech plum, not bothered. And it continued to put on new growth and has continued to grow uh, throughout the season. You can get beneficial insects. So you can go to your local garden center and buy ladybugs or lace wings. It's always important to make sure you know what you should and shouldn't be putting into your garden. Um, so checking with your local garden center, checking with your local you know, university extension to understand, okay, what's in, what's in your area? What are the pests and what are their natural predators and what can I, um, what can I use in my garden? You know, we, we have a lot of slugs in, in our garden. They just absolutely love it. We, you know, and, and the idea that like, if you have raised beds, you're not gonna have slugs, is a, that's a myth. They will climb up and over the, um, the raised beds. No problem, they don't, they're not bothered by it. But because we put a small wildlife pond in, uh, in our vegetable bed, and we've encouraged frogs. And frogs, they will eat caterpillars and they will eat slugs. So every night they go out and they go hunting. Now, they're not gonna kill every single slug, but they are doing a bit to help curb the population and make any damage from slugs less than it might otherwise be. Again, it all comes back to having a certain level of comfort with, with some damage, with some insect damage. You know, things are going to get into your garden. They might be small like insects and they might be larger like rabbits or groundhog or deer. Over the years, I've done um, a lot of different things to try to keep these creatures out. Now deer will do a lot of damage. Even if they're not eating stuff, they walk through and they trample things. We have a fence around our garden just to deter the deer. It doesn't mean that they can't lean over the fence and, and get things that are close to the fence. They certainly will, and I just have to accept that. Another good example are ants. Ants are fascinating, fascinating creatures. And yes, ants in the house could be problematic, could be a sign that you have, you know, rotting wood and things like that. So you might want to get rid of, say, carpenter ants, but also make sure you're calling your carpenter to find out why those ants are there in the first place. If we take that aside and think about ants in the garden, ants are beneficial. So if I see ants in the garden, if I see ants on my flowers, like my peonies, for example, they are not doing any harm whatsoever. In the garden, they serve a couple of functions. They are themselves pollinators. Um, and also, they move material. 
they move soil and they also are important in mineral cycling. So they will dig deeper down in through the soil layers and be able to bring up minerals that plants need as well. Not just organic matter that you may be giving them with fertilizer, but they need certain minerals that the ants are able to bring up from deeper in the soil. Earthworms aren't able to do that. And in fact, I would say that ants are more beneficial in your garden than earthworms. I'd like us to stop demonizing pests. We need to be comfortable with accepting some loss, plan for some loss, plan for these um, insects and other creatures that might get to some of your plants. Put out sacrificial plants, flowers that attract insects that might otherwise be on your vegetables or plant out extra tomato plants in an area away from where you have your main harvest so you have a place to attract other insects to and a place to relocate insects to when you find them in your garden. So again, they have a chance to be they have a chance to grow and continue to propagate and also they feed other creatures that are part of the food chain as well. Anytime you eliminate part of the food chain, you're causing a knock-on effect and ultimately you can end up doing more harm than good. I certainly will caveat all this ranting with you need to understand what is native and what is appropriate in the garden in the areas where you live. I know about my area um, because this is where I have been and this is where I've been gardening for 20 odd years and you know your area is going to have different conditions, different predators, different beneficials. It's really important to connect with your local garden centers, your um, local gardening communities, your university extensions. You know there are people with a lot of information out there that can help you specifically where you are. They will have the information and I'm sure they're more than happy to give you advice and give you recommendation. So with that I hope you give this another thought. I hope you think about working with nature instead of working against it. It's better for nature, it's better for the wildlife, and I think it makes us better gardeners. You know, as gardeners, we are in this position to be stewards of the environment around us. We have the ability to exert some level of control over the space in which we occupy. And so that's part of why I garden. I garden for feeding my body and my mind. I do my part for nature as a whole. And that's also why we have this channel. It's because we want to share this. We want to share this advice. We want to get you thinking about what you can do in your spaces. Thank you very much for, for watching. I hope you found this helpful. If you've got any questions or other thoughts, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. If you want more information, you want more advice and tips, you can sign up for our email newsletter that comes out once a week. I'll leave a link for that down in the description box. Until next time, happy gardening, and I'll see you in the next one. Hi, it's Dan from the Frog Pond Veg Patch. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. That'll help us create new content to share with you. And while you're here, check out this next video I have lined up for you. And don't forget to like and subscribe. That's the best way to help us out on this channel.